Good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Thank you so much for that introduction, Brian. What a pleasure it is to be here in London to meet leaders from across the province. Quel grand plaisir d'être ici à London et de rencontrer des leaders de partout à travers la province. Thank you to Colin and to the entire board of directors of the Association of Municipalities of Ontario for your work in organizing this conference. And thank you to Mayor Morgan for hosting us here in beautiful London. One of the best parts of AMO is the depth of perspective and the passion that each of you bring to this conference. With 443 municipalities, Ontario is like a big family. And for those of you, like me, who grew up with siblings, you know that we don't always agree on everything. But one thing we can all agree on, we're all focused on building a better future. Right now, at this very moment, people around the world are dreaming about the future and the opportunities that exist for them and their families right here in Ontario. Just last week, I had the pleasure and the honour of attending a citizenship ceremony in my riding in the town of East Gullenberry. Many of the people I spoke with told me that the ceremony was a dream come true for them. The dream of greater opportunity for themselves and their families, the dream of freedom, and the dream of a better future. It was an emotional moment for everyone in attendance and a powerful reminder that we live in the greatest country in the world. <laughs> to me, this is one of the best parts about my job as MPP. It's hearing these stories that inspire all of us as leaders to continue building communities where our kids can turn their dreams into reality. And this is why so many people are coming every year to Canada and to Ontario. This year alone, we will welcome a staggering 250,000 new people to Ontario, and this number is only growing. And while this is great news for our economy, jobs, and our future prosperity, it is essential that we build infrastructure so that your communities are ready to welcome more families. The reality is, we do not have the infrastructure in place today to manage the growth that we expect in the future. So we need to build that infrastructure, and that includes a strong transportation network. As leaders in your communities, you see and hear firsthand just how critical our transportation network is for people every single day. In fact, I know that's one of the reasons that you come to AMO to advocate for better transportation infrastructure for your residents. And I know it because of the number of delegation requests I've received. And I can tell you, it is a long list. But all jokes aside, I deeply respect your commitment to your communities. As we move forward with our plan to build, this means investing in transportation projects that are priorities for each of your communities. Whether it's twinning the Highway 17 in Kenora, building the new LRT in Hamilton, or replacing critical bridges in Ottawa, we're focused on building Ontario. Over the next 10 years, we're investing more than $27 billion for our highway network and $70 billion to expand public transit. And these investments are the direct result of the feedback that we hear from local leaders like all of you here. Through our close collaboration over the years, one of the top issues that I've heard about is gridlock on our roads. That's why, as Minister of Transportation, I've been focused on expanding our highway network while ensuring that everyone can get home safely at the end of the day. I know how frustrating it is to be stuck in traffic. It's time away from our families. And that's why we're expanding our highway network with projects like Highway 413. For the rapidly growing communities across Peel, Halton, and York regions, the new Highway 413 will reduce travel times, it will create jobs, and it will support future growth.
with 200,000 new people coming to the GTHA each and every year, we will be welcoming a population close to the size of Mississauga in five years' time. The 413 will be a critical component in addressing this growth. Now, the MTO has studied the gridlock problem for decades. Ministry officials identified Highway 413 as a solution to support population growth over 20 years ago. This solution was presented to the previous Liberal government, and instead of building Highway 413, they sat by as gridlock got worse. Gridlock doesn't just take time away from our families. It costs our economy, too. The reality is the cost to move goods is rising. And when trucks are stuck in traffic, costs at the grocery store go up. Now, opponents of this highway may think that this is okay, that it's okay to do nothing and ignore the infrastructure needs of our growing population, the rising cost of goods, and the impact of congestion on our quality of life. But our government doesn't think that it's okay. Like your communities, we know that building is the right thing to do. Gridlock on our major highways will only get worse if we don't act now. Highway 401 is already the most congested corridor anywhere in North America. And this is something that the politicians in Ottawa just don't seem to understand. Ottawa continues to cause unnecessary delays to this critical project, despite the overwhelming support from residents along the proposed route. So let me be clear. Now is not the time for political delays. Ontarians cannot afford an action on such a critical piece of infrastructure. We are listening to our municipal partners, and we are working with you to build the projects that you critically need. And as I look around the room, I am very proud of the work that we're doing in your communities to build right across the board. Whether it's the next phase of the new Highway 7, between Kitchener and Guelph, the expansion of the Garden City Skyway connecting St. Catharines and Niagara-on-the-Lake, the widening of the 401 East from Pickering through Eastern Ontario, Highway 3 between Essex and Leamington, or the Bradford Bypass, which will connect Highways 400 and 404, relie relieving gridlock on local roads in Simcoe County and York Region. Right now, there are more than 600 expansion and rehabilitation projects either underway or planned for the next four years. More than ever before, it is our government that is making historic investments to support new infrastructure in your communities. And today, I am pleased to be able to announce the launch of this year's Connecting Links program, providing funding to municipalities to upgrade infrastructure that connects provincial highways and bridges Highways and bridges is another way that our government is supporting you. Applications for the 2024-2025 Connecting Links program funding are now open, and I encourage all eligible municipalities to apply. And on that note, I know how important this program is to your communities. And so I want you to know that that is why the ministry is actively reviewing the program so that more communities can benefit in the future. Now, our government also knows that simply building infrastructure is not enough. I know that for every community, safety is always the top priority. It is the same for our government. And that's why, as we expand our highway network, we're also doing the work to ensure that our roads remain safe. Ontario is a very big province, and we have an extensive highway network, which Northerners know very well. Long drives can be dangerous, drivers can get tired, and weather conditions can make the roads treacherous. When we came to office, it was clear that we needed to build in more rest area infrastructure along our highway network. And that's just what we did in 2020 when we announced that we would be implementing the largest expansion of rest areas in our history and plans are underway. To date, two new rest areas and eight rehabilitation projects have been completed. And over the next two years, eight new year-round rest areas will be opening in Northern Ontario, 
and six more rehabilitation projects will be completed. And we won't be stopping there. We've already started exploring phase two of our rest area expansion and improvement projects. We're going to build more rest areas with heated washrooms, EV charging stations, and ample parking for trucks and passenger vehicles because rest stops save lives. And as I've said before, safety will always be my top priority. And as minister, I know that driving in the winter can be extremely dangerous in bad weather. And that's why, after careful study and extensive consultation, we implemented a new Trans-Ontario standard of 12 hours to bare pavement on highways 11 and 17. This means that snow plows are clearing highways 11 and 17 four hours faster than they were when we were elected in 2018. Under our government, Ontario is now a North American leader in winter maintenance. Cela signifie que les chasse-neige dégagent les autoroutes 11 et 17 quatre heures plus vite qu'ils le faisaient avant notre élection en 2018. Sous notre gouvernement, l'Ontario est maintenant un chef de file nord-américain de l'entretien hivernal. Now, unlike our opponents, Premier Ford's plan to build Ontario is one that takes a balanced approach. For every dollar our government has invested in highways, we are investing three dollars in public transit. So for those who say that we are only focused on roads, well, the facts tell another story. In fact, we are making historic investments to build new and improve public transit right across the province. We're also strengthening Ontario's regional rail network with GO Expansion, which will be a game changer for the GTHA. GO Expansion will bring two-way, all-day service to communities like Hamilton, Barrie, Kitchener, Waterloo, and Bowmanville. We're moving from diesel to electric trains that will reach speeds of up to 140 kilometers per hour, and work is well underway. And while GO Expansion will better communities in the GTHA, we are also investing in passenger rail for the north. Thanks to Minister Stancho's leadership, our government has purchased three new trains to restore the Ontario Northlander. The return of this vital service will reconnect communities between Toronto and Timmins and from Cochrane to Moosonee via the Polar Bear Express. And we aren't just investing in transit in our biggest cities, but in communities large and small, urban and rural. Last year, we provided more than $379 million to 107 municipalities to operate and improve local transit through the gas tax program. In addition, our Community Transportation Grant Program supports people living in areas with limited public transportation options. The program supports local and intercommunity transportation services for Indigenous communities, seniors, and people with disabilities. We are focused on supporting your communities, and we are delivering results. Just last week, I was proud to be in Timmins with my colleague, Minister Peary, to see the progress that we're making to improve Highway 101. This project is critical to supporting jobs, moving goods, and unlocking tourism in Timmins. I am incredibly proud of the partnership and investments that we have all made together. And we are not stopping. We're going to continue to build in every corner of our province. Before I close, I want to thank you for your continued partnership and collaboration. It's true what they say about Ontario. We only have two seasons, winter and construction. But as leaders, that's music to our ears because together we're building a stronger province for future generations. Ensemble, nous construisons une province plus solide pour les générations futures. So let's keep building Ontario. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup.